of Hardball to talk about the political fallout from this. Chris, first, your reaction to this verdict? Well, I think uh, Fitzgerald did a great job of proving that uh, to that jury that uh, Scooter Libby lied, deliberately lied on many occasions, that he uh, never sought to tell the truth and, uh, and was found guilty of perjury and obstruction of justice, appropriately so. We get caught up sometimes in all the, the legal mumbo jumbo on this, Chris, you know, which counts he was found guilty and not guilty on. But the political significance, the larger significance of this case, why it came to a head in the first place. What was going on inside the White House that led Scooter Libby to leak the name of Valerie Plain in the first place? Well, I think these, uh, there's, you're right, it's complicated. There's three layers to this cover-up, and I think that it's stacked up like flapjacks. The first level, of course, is the one proven today, the perjury. That was a cover-up. Uh, Scooter Libby was found guilty of lying to defend the vice president. The vice president told him about Valerie Wilson. That's been proven impl implicitly by this jury finding. And not Tim Russert. You know, he was caught lying. He said it was Tim. It was, in fact, the vice president. He, goes, he may well go to jail for a long time for that lie, for that cover-up. In fact, the prosecutor, Fitzgerald, said in his summation there's a cloud over the vice president because the vice president, according to testimony, was the one instructing Scooter what to do every day, which reporters to talk to, what to tell them, what, not, what details not to give them. Right down the line, it was the two men working hand in glove. So that cloud over the vice president is part of this first layer of cover-up. And the second was the alleged by the prosecutor, the alleged hullabaloo, this crazy zealotry on the part of the, pres of the vice president and Scooter to try to discredit, to debunk, to destroy Joe Wilson, to say his wife sent him on a junk, and when in fact sworn testimony by three different officials, two CIA officials and one State Department official in this trial have testified under oath that it was the vice president's query that led to that trip to Africa. So that was one second level of cover-up, but then of course there's the big cover-up, the case made for war, which was broken very, on, very early on when the administration had to admit that those 16 words in the State of the Union in 2003 were not accurate, they were not appropriate, there was no deal to buy uranium in Africa by Saddam Hussein. So stacked up like flapjacks, these incredible cover-ups, and they've been alleged and effectively agreed to by the jury, we're going to have to see how the vice president stands the heat now.